Uh, let's see. Well, then we've got this nice, pretty picture here about motion. So we're kind of switching gears here just a little bit now. If you're, if you'll allow me to do that. If everybody's okay with what we've done so far, okay. And what we're sneaking into is moments, okay, and not not clock moments, okay, force moments. So if you look there on page 38, you'll see that there's translation, translation with rotation, and just plain out rotation. Translation is just a move, right? It's just a fancy way of saying move, especially if we're talking CAD. Some CAD systems, they use translation instead of the word move. So that's all. Now, and you've got the P is some kind of a force. Okay, and it, it, I guess it all depends on how things are anchored and where that force is being applied, basically, is what these pictures are telling you. If it's pinned on one end, then it's going to have to rotate, isn't it? And just think of a compass that you would use. Well, you guys, you guys have probably never used a compass, have you, in drafting? Okay. But here's where it's more apt to be used in your design life, if you will, from now on, or if you're doing some kind of mechanical work. Okay. There's a moment there. And it's a force times a distance. That's what a moment is, right? Or some people would like to refer to that as torque. Okay, so you'll hear torque used as well. Uh, and of course, the farther out D goes, the more force you're gonna be applying, right? So, you know, when I'm working in my shop and I've got a real stubborn bolt or nut, I put a breaker bar on it and then I put a pipe on that to extend that out even farther then break the breaker bar you know so but if you have a Sears or a snap on you can take it back and get another one or I guess even cobalt does that right found that I didn't realize that I bought something one time cobalt from Lowe's and broke it and oh you can take that back cool <laughs> doesn't matter how dumb you are with the tools you can still take it back so but that's what's going on there you know we call that a cheater pipe so you put a cheater on there and get more out of it and you can sometimes break the bolt loose or sometimes you break the socket or sometimes you know there's a weak link there somewhere in there so you hope it's the nut or the bolt so that's what we're looking at here okay and we're going to use that now there's some uh, just a different picture of the same thing basically but what's more important here is what's down here in the writing. Clockwork, and this, don't ask me why, I didn't make the rules up, okay? But in mechanical, clockwise is negative. Now to me, when the clock goes around, that means a positive time, right? Not in this class, okay? Clockwise is negative moment. Counterclockwise is positive. Remember that, doggone it. Yeah, but I do think the civils do change that. I think they reverse that for whatever reason. Yeah, but don't think in terms of because it's pointing down, it's a negative X or a negative Y, or it's pointing to the left. Don't think in those terms. When you start thinking about moments, it's rotation. So which way is the circle going? Okay, don't think in terms of X and Y at this point. That's a convention that we have to use. Well, now we've got this force, or we've got these three forces, actually. And what we have to do is determine what's going on at point O. One nice thing about it with this example, we can forget about this one. Ha! Because what's the distance there? 
if we're talking about moments now, we can't forget about that force as far as what it might be trying to do to pull it. But if we're simply trying to solve this, if we're doing a summation of the moments about point O, okay, and that's how we'll write that, what are those forces doing to that point at O with respect to making that thing spin, if you will? Well, if we labeled, if we actually put that force in there, here's what it would be. It would be 40 pounds, right, times zero feet. Looks like everything's, we've got five feet here. Well, what's that equal? Zero. zero. So anything that's going, pointing and going through that point gets canceled out. And sometimes that's pretty important because you might not be able to solve the problem if you have too many unknowns. Or you have to go to a different technique to solve that problem when you really didn't have to because you forgot that one concept. So don't forget that. It's a simple concept, but don't forget it when you're doing problems because sometimes it, you know, it'll make you want to pull your hair out. And as you get older, you appreciate the fact that you don't want to do that. They start turning gray and they fall out. Of course, my son's, you know, going bald. <laughs> he's a poor kid. <laughs> he's got all his hair and he's going bald. He's 29. It's his grandpa's fault, not my fault. It's his mother's dad's fault, not my dad's fault. So anyhow, forget about the 40 there. And there's why. So I'm just going to take my big fat eraser, get rid of that. Okay, so then we've got the rotation, so since it's up on a horizontal axis, it's not going to affect that one way or another. Yeah, and you don't even have to say because it's on the horizontal axis. You can just say because it's going through the point zero or O here. Anything that goes through the point will not make it spin. It can't, can it? It cannot make it spin. There has, it has to be so far off. So in other words, if you try to spin a wheel that's on a bearing, if you were trying to, to push it right at that axis of that, it won't spin, will it? You have to go farther out on that wheel to make it spin. So, and again, if there's no D value, anything times zero has to be zero, doesn't it? So that makes it great. Okay. Well, then we've got this force F2 here, 75 pounds. That's 75 pounds times, looks like five feet, eh? And you could just use the, the hash mark there. That hash, that would, would that be a hash mark? It's not a hashtag, is it? Can't say that with you young guys. You'd be wanting to put a pound sign in there. And since it's going counterclock, isn't that going counterclockwise? If this took off and started spinning, it would go that way, wouldn't it? And again, think in terms of I've got a piece of string here and I pull it out to this force and I take off with that force and it's going to want to, that's a better arc there maybe. It's going to want to take off and go that way, isn't it? So that's a positive. Do what? Yes. Yeah. Counterclockwise, is that what you said? I, I remember. I let me hold on one second. I can help this a little bit. No, uh, I said anticlockwise, not counterclockwise. Anticlockwise? Yeah, that's a, that's a that's another way of saying it. Exactly. Well, let me get uh, let me get tuned in here a little better. I bought these fancy dancy hearing aids. I might as well use them, hadn't I? Okay, so that's the first one. Do what? I'm getting ready to. Oh, I was talking shit last semester. He heard me halfway down the hall while he was in the room. Well, I, and he knows too. There's another thing I can do on here too. I can turn a microphone on and set it back there by him if I have to. 
because it uses the mic from from these as well. So it's pretty handy. They're they're Bluetooth. Plus, then when you guys are taking a test, I can sit here and listen to the radio. I don't have to worry. <laughs> you don't have to answer the questions. <laughs> well, no, I would have to turn it down so I can answer the questions. But it really, I mean, right now it sounds like I'm hollering. But I just have to remember to turn them off when we leave here. So, yeah, it's pretty handy. Uh, technology is great. Okay, so I guess if I start talking softer too, I, maybe that, you tell me if you can't hear me. So then we've got, so we've gotten rid of those two. Now the only thing left is this force right here, right? So what this breaks down to, and if you'll allow me to erase this stuff here now, so I can draw again. What this force breaks down to now is a force like this, right? And a force like that. This one being uh, 60 pounds cosine of 30, right? And this one being 60 pounds sine of 30. Well, 60 pounds cosine of 30 is ignored, isn't it? because it's going through the point. So we end up with negative 60 pounds sine of 30 times 5 feet. And personally, I would probably just do the 60 pounds sine of 30 and put a value in there. But I'm writing this out so you can see where it came from. But normally I would just punch that in my calculator and write that down times five. So if you do the math on that, I'm hoping, oh, I guess that would have been uh, 150 foot pounds, or 150 pounds. No, it wouldn't have been because that's times five. I'm hoping when you do your math on that, that this comes out to 225 pounds feet. <clears throat> and that came out a positive value, so it's actually going this way, isn't it? That arrow kind of looks bad, doesn't it? Or what and and to stop any confusion, what I would suggest we do here, rather than drawing that picture, let's say C C W. And that's counterclockwise, not concealed carry weapon. Okay? Not in this class. Unfortunately. <laughs> Personally I wish we could all carry. We'd all be nicer, wouldn't we? I think there was a guy named Ben Franklin said something to that effect. So that, we're always going to be rotating around the axis, not the point. Well, we're always, we're always going to be rotating about whatever point we're studying. See, in this case, it's O. So we, were, we aren't rotating as long as we're on this axis, but when we're five feet out, we're making that thing rotate. So we're not we're not rotating about this point right here. Okay? That's just where the forces are attached to this body. But what we're doing, and, and typically what you would be thinking you would you would be wanting to um, study would be like the center of gravity. Maybe would be a place where you would look, you know, what's gonna happen. To, to my body that I'm studying based on the center of gravity or in the case of some of these problems we're going to be doing later on here 
we're going to be where we're headed on this is and I'm going to have to make this whole screen bigger I guess uh, yeah, I can do it with this so what we're doing here is we're studying this about 0.0 okay to see what's going on based on these forces what's going on at this location here and here well, we'll solve for one, and then we'll use that to solve for the other. So this is where we're headed based on these moment type things. Okay? So we can tell, for instance, if I call this O, I'm going to have something going on here at O in the Y direction. And potentially, I'm going to have something going on here in the X direction and if you're not sure what it is assume to the right okay then over here on this this other end what are we gonna call it R uh, let's call it S okay on this location over here we would have something probably going on on the Y direction and in the x direction, in this case, it equals zero. Because remember, we've got that roller situation. This is how we ended up last Friday, wasn't it? We had that roller situation going on there. And anytime it's a roller, if I take this marker and roll it across the floor, there's nothing to resist it until it hits that wall. Okay. Well, there's nothing to resist any movement of that beam based on that point on the X direction. Now, there is on the Y. In this case, there was the floor, wasn't there? Well, in this case, there would be the floor there, too. The floor is actually pushing back up, isn't it, to keep that from falling. That's what S subscript Y represents. That's the force of the floor pushing up on that mechanism or in this case a beam just like over at O the force of the floor is pushing up to resist all those forces that are pushing down plus the weight of the beam but in this class we kind of neglect the weight of the beam okay and O in the X direction we're not sure now I can tell you in this case O in the X would equal zero because all of those forces are pushing down. There's no side to side movement. We also neglect things like wind. Okay. Uh, friction we'll be dealing with it at some point probably. Okay. But in this case, there wouldn't be any friction anyway, for that matter. Okay. Now, what they're showing you in this picture is those three forces if you add them up you can find a force that is somewhere on that beam that you could use as like a concentrated load that r at some distance you can figure that out based on using some moment equations so we'll do that's basically what we'll be doing but the first part of this, we've got to figure out what's going on at, at X or at uh, O and S so that we can tell what, you know, what kind of concrete abutment we're going to have to have or what kind of pins we're going to have to have to hold this thing in place. Or in the case of that roller, you know, if it, depending on what we're made out of, if, it's, if it can't handle those forces, it's going to crack or fracture or, or just crumble in it especially if it's like concrete so we have to know those things okay and you could substitute you know well okay I've got a pin there I've got some kind of a concrete piece or a wooden block or whatever and that's what we would be doing in the second half of this class once we figured that out how do we go and look at the materials and the and the engineering data from the materials and make sure that those forces that we're putting on it that that piece of material can withstand that then we have to start looking at different forces you know you've got 
shear force, tensile uh, force, you've got torsional, and they all do different things to different materials. So that's what the second half does. So then you apply what we're doing now. I guess you have to apply some of that materials class too that some of you are taking now, right? Okay, so that's what that picture is showing. 